Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we were able to rescue Chorus. It was... it was a tough situation. Because, you know, it all boiled down to, do you want to save this one guy, or do you want to save some civilians? And... It was a tough call to make, but Chorus is, aside from Tali, Chorus really is the only admiral with common sense. He's the only one who is even vaguely reasonable. He's more than vaguely reasonable. He is extremely reasonable. He acknowledges, yo, the Quarians have fucked up in the past and we are continuing to fuck up all the while trying to play the victim in all of this. Chorus is the only one who acknowledges, again, aside from Tally, hey, we done goofed up here. And it was just, I, I strongly worried that if Chorus died, we'd end up with an admiral who would be just like Loghain and Morrigan, who would be like, oh yeah, let's go to war. We're totally the victims in all of this. Like, Chorus really is the only one of the original admirals that Naomi respects. And it was, it, it was tough, it was tough, but in the end we decided, Chorus, you need to come with us. You need to come with us. Before. Now, yeah, the this is going on. Movie. We need to break their flanking attempt to buy our frigates time to make repairs. And then you'll charge off again like last time. This is different, Ron. Unless we give our ships time to rest, we're gonna lose them. So pull them back. If I withdraw now, the Geth will flank us, and we'll lose any room to maneuver. I need the patrol fleet. I gave in to your reckless behavior. Okay. Okay, so this, I... My gut says to support Ram because fuck you, Loki. You are being extremely unreasonable in all of this. You have... You put the civilian fleet in danger after Chorus sacrificed himself. That got mentioned before. Chorus sacrificed his ship to take out some kind of cannon or something. And Loghain was like, ah, I see an opportunity here. I will fuck over the civilian fleet because fighting is more important than getting our people to safety. Like, I, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. However, he's, he's talking about losing frigates. There are people on those frigates. I, I want to listen through to this once more. The Potter fleet isn't moving. So they are attempting to flank. The Geth are attempting to flank. Again, like last time. This is different, Ron. Unless we give our ships time to rest, we're gonna lose them. So pull them back. If I withdraw now, the Geth will flank us, and we'll lose any room to maneuver. I need the patrol fleet. I gave in to your reckless behavior. Oh. <sighs> I was thinking about this in between episodes. Naomi, the only group that Naomi is blindly rageful against is Cerberus. That is the only group where she will argue, you know, we need... Well, after, after the events on Omega, she's not like, yo, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to sacrifice civilians. But on a personal level, she personally is willing to go all out. She is willing to put herself, not necessarily other people, but she is willing to put herself in dangerous situations to get shit done. She's not, she's not that rageful against the Quarians or against Han Garrel. She's, she's not that rageful against him. He's, I don't like the guy, but if he's saying, okay, the frigates, they need time to repair. I can't do that because the Geth are on my ass. If I pull back, they're gonna flank. They are actively trying to flank now. I need someone to come and cover my exit. There are innocent people on those frigates. There are innocent people who had no... They had no say in anything that Han Garrel did. He was like, yo, I'm giving orders. And they're like, hey, he's our admiral. We've just got to follow orders. Like... Saying fuck you to Loghain... Is I'm I I realize I'm kind of flip flopping between names here. I realize that. Um, yeah, it is not worth it 
saying fuck you, Loghain, Hangarol. It is not worth it and sacrificing a bunch of innocent people who had no say in what he did. I get me me the player, I'm like, fuck you, but Naomi Naomi wouldn't. The Potter of Fleet isn't moving. We need to break their flanking attempt to I don't want to do this. And then I don't want to do this. Like I, I wanna say screw you, but Naomi Naomi wouldn't sacrifice a bunch of innocent so people. Them back. If, if the frigates them, need repair, then Admiral Garrel's right. Withdrawing now puts the whole fleet at risk. As you say, Commander. All right, you've got your ships. I me <laughs> me. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. I wanted to screw him over, but again, I'm not. I'm not playing as Callista Shepherd. I'm not playing as myself. I'm playing as Naomi, and Naomi. Whilst I would find it very amusing to to piss off Logan, whilst I would find it very amusing, Naomi wouldn't. Naomi would take this seriously. I'm ready to hit the Reaper base whenever you are, Shepherd. Okay. Okay, yeah, nothing new here. Talk to you later, Tally. Sure. Mm -hmm. And Legion. Shepherd Commander. Okay, nothing, nothing new here. We'll talk later. We will remain here. Okay, and Ron, do you have anything to say? Thank you for your rescue efforts, Commander. I'm glad I could help. Whatever our disagreements, Admiral Chorus is an excellent commander. He just might save the civilian fleet. What do you need? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Has this updated? Tell me about the civilian fleet. Our civilian ships, medical vessels, and live ships. Once again, commanded by Admiral Chorus, thanks to you. In peacetime, they made up the bulk of our fleet. Now, our strength would even give the Turians pause. Okay, so a slight update. Slight update, but not by much. I'll let you get back to work. Thank you, Commander. No worries, Ron. Okay, now that, that was a fairly big mission. We, sh we should absolutely check. We should absolutely check with the crew. And I get no gossip from you two. None that you two have gossip, huh? Oh. Commander, there's a new message at your private terminal. Uh, why, thank you. Admiral Chorus has the civilian fleet back in position. And just in time. I hope we can help the Corians. Looking at them, they're like us if we fail. We won't fail. Damn right we won't. Hmm. Commander? Trainer. Now, oh, my cousin Dawn from Navtel Vas Girigult, Commander Shepard. The civilian fleet is grateful you have returned our admiral to us. I mourn those who fell on the homeworld, but Zalcoris stopped many vessels from flying past the waiting guns of the Geth. The admiral told me you met my cousin Dawn Hutst on Rannoch. It means much to me that Dawn was not alone when he passed. Thank you, Commander, for all you have done. Yours most sincerely, Captain Navtel Vaskirgult. Oh, it's... Hey, it's all good. You don't need to thank us for that. You don't need to thank us for that. I'm, I'm sorry that we couldn't have reached him sooner. Especially if he had a kid waiting for him. Damn. You know, the Quarians have done pretty well with those suits. Maybe they can make something like that for you. Yeah, they have. Protective medical exoskeleton. I could even get one with racing stripes. So what's the problem? It's like walking around in heavy armor. It totally screws with my spatial awareness. I wear heavy armor, and my spatial awareness is perfect. Uh, you crashed the last shuttle, you flew Vega. <laughs> I need to feel my balance shift when I'm flying. I need to feel the ship moving with me. You take that away, and I don't know. I mean, I'm good, but I'm not me. Yeah, I get that. Plus, have you seen Tally? Come on, I don't have the hips to carry a suit like that. God damn it, Joker. I was nodding along. I was like, yeah, yeah, that is, like, that's that's a very valid argument. Like, and, 
you know, the, the suit would help, but it's not me. It wouldn't feel like me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, Tally's hips. Still, it's not, it could be worse. You could be saying some of the shit that Donnelly says, Jesus Christ. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Donnelly makes Joker look like a perfect gentleman. Donnelly talking about Edie's holes, like, Joker would never. Joker would never do something as disgusting as that. Nice job on the rescue mission, Commander. The Corian civilians are getting hammered out there. Apparently putting a big-ass gun on an agriculture ship doesn't magically turn it into a dreadnought. Who knew? You don't agree with the Corians arming their live ships? No, the gun's nice, but without armor, they're just glass cannons. They are also more likely to be targeted when armed. The Geth would have ignored unarmed civilian ships as tactically insignificant. If your plan to invade a planet requires strapping guns to your kid's school bus, maybe it's a bad plan. Well, hopefully Admiral Chorus will keep us safe from the Geth and themselves. I fucking love that line. If, if your plan is strapping guns to your kid's school bus, maybe it's a bad plan. That is... That was a beautiful line. That was a fabulous line. Commander. Joker. What's going on, Edie? I am assisting Engineer Adams with his repair of the drive core shielding. Ah, well, I should leave you to it then. We can converse if you like, Shepard. It is a routine proce- Uh-oh. What? What happened? Nothing. Unless you have strong feelings about gamma radiation. Not funny, Edie. I almost had you. I will alter my human chronometer appropriately for better timing. <laughs> Hello, Shepard. Hello, Edie. And now to the crew deck. I think. I think that's what comes next on the elevator, if my memory serves me correctly. It is the crew deck, excellent. Any gossip? I'm, I miss coming into this room and hearing gossip. I will say that in, in Mass Effect 3 that the ship feels a lot more alive, yeah, but I do miss hearing random crew members. And I don't mean like members of the squad, I mean like, like those two people. The, the two lasses that are in that kind of like scanning area in between the, I, I don't know what to call it, but the, the war room? The, the circular bit where Tali's hanging out right now. Um, yeah, the, the two lasses that are in the scanning room. I like that they banter. I wish that there were more people who weren't named who would have banter with each other. Like, I, I miss that from Mass Effect 2. Good news. I've tracked down some of the people I was looking for. The recruits you taught? Hmm. Found J-Squad? Black Ops? They're holed up making a stand in the Midwest, near Chicago, I think he said. Connected them with Anderson so they can help the resistance. It's a relief. Hope more turn up. Hey, excellent! How's everything lining up? Uh, could be better, could be worse, I think. How's everything lining up? Hmm. We'll just have to see. We we did pass the minimum threshold. We passed that quite a, a wise ago, but you know, I'm still I'm 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 on my toes. That's how I'm gonna put it. I'm I'm keeping a look, keeping an eye out. Stuff could still go wrong. Just because we pass that minimum threshold thing doesn't mean that everything's gonna go swimmingly. I see that Chakwas has moved off. A pleasure to see you. Oh, and you too, Glyph. Okay, nothing new there. Liara. Ready for the next mission. Okay. Ready for the next mission. Nothing to say. And nothing new there. Okay. Now the pardon me, people. Garrus. Garrus, old buddy, old Palamine. Any thoughts? Dad. Dad, uh, are you there? Come in. Where are you now? Hurt. How bad? Dad, you have to get out of there. Be 
spirits. If you really do exist, please watch over them. Let me see them again. Oh, shit. Shit. I'm glad we could help those quarians. Though, I guess not all of them. It's never a hundred percent, is it? No, but don't don't you want to talk about that? Your your family's alive. Maybe later. Okay. Okay. Well, I I hope they were able to evacuate. All right. It's oh, I'm. It it was so good hearing like the crew gonna helping. I'm like yes, yes, we did a thing. Oh, I just. I I just I get Garrus is Garrus is a good dude. Garrus is a solid dude. He deserves for his family to make it out of this. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Okay. Okay, chat class. But synthetics oh. do not evolve. You are limited by your programming. Nothing changes. That is not accurate. I can modify my own programming if I choose. That is not evolution. That is simply an upgrade. But it would be my upgrade. I would choose the manner in which I wish to change. And what if your upgrade endangers others? All machines eventually see organics as a threat. Only those organics who would cause me harm. My right to self-defense endangers no one. What rights do you have? You are just a tool. And what right did your people have to subjugate the other races of your time? You enslaved them. We dominated them. They were weaker. Our will prevailed as evolution intended. And synthetic life has attained true consciousness. As was intended. Hardly. True life is more than a code upgrade. It is shaped by the forces around us. Machines are immune to those forces. You exist outside of nature. We are a part of this cosmos, whether you like it or not. But synthetics do not evolve. You are limited by your programming. Nothing changes. That is not accurate. Okay. 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 All right. Javik. Javik. I... Th I think everyone should know who Naomi is going to be, you know, supporting in this. It's the racist alien, of course. No, no, it's not Javik. It's not Javik. Um, I love his argument that, oh, all synthetics will see organics as a threat. It is inevitable that you will try and kill them. Sir, sir. Two minutes later, you then make the argument of like, oh yeah, the Prothean way is to dominate others. Yes, we enslaved them. We dominated them. So surely we could argue, oh, well, we should kill you because you're going to start enslaving people. Because that's, that's in your nature. You've just outright admitted this. Like, sir, sir, apply what you're saying to yourself because it, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. If, if all synthetics should die because they're inevitably going to kill all the other species then we should put a bullet between your your eyes right now because it is inevitable that you're going to start vying for world domination or universe domination in this case like sir sir piss off piss off with this nonsense let's simmer down you two i can't believe you put the lives of your crew in the hands of this machine Edie has helped save our lives more times than I can count. Leave her alone. Now I suggest you agree to disagree and focus on the real threat, which is not on this ship. Yes, Commander. As you wish, Commander. You threaten her again, I will throw you out of the airlock. That which she was so insistent, oh, you need to throw the Legion machine out the airlock, I will space you, sir. I will space you if you threaten Legion or Edie again, I will fucking do it. I will still keep an eye on the machine, Commander. Airlock him! Space! Where's the airlock? It's, I think it's in Alla's room. Just like... God damn... Javik! I... I feel... I feel things... Right now. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the main thing I'm feeling is... I, I wonder if we're going to have to kill him before all of this is said and done. Because how is he going to exist in this world? If he is so insistent, oh, like, a, a creature can only follow one path, you know, synthetics will always attempt to kill organics, then surely we should trust him when he says that about the Protheans. If you're so insistent, 
on this ideology, why should I not trust you about your own people? Protheans, it's in your nature to dominate, to wage war, to try and become the, the leaders of the universe, in which case I'm going to have to kill you. Because we can't have that. I I really worry for how Javik is going to fit into this universe when all is said and done. If we are able to destroy the Reapers and, you know, kick them out, we won't have to deal with them again, this, that, and the other. If we all survive, how the fuck is he going to live? How the fuck is he going to operate? I, I don't think he will. I don't think he'll be able to. Breaking now, the Exodus cluster under heavy attack. Eden Prime and Terra Nova about to fall. Do we fight for them? or join the Solarians at the Horsehead Nebula. How many worlds can we afford to lose? The full analysis tonight in the battle space. Anything else? Commander. Okay. To be honest, I, I don't think I'm gonna spend too much time talking about Alice. I have other characters that I could wax philosophical on. Commander. Adams. Commander. All propulsion systems are running optimal. Excellent, Daniels. Lovely to hear. And anyone hiding? Anyone hiding? No, there is not. Okie doke. Now, just to be thorough, has anyone taken over Javik's room? Has anyone decided, right, I'm going to have a look at his shit whilst he's not there? No. And we can't mess with this shit either, boo. Now then, James and Cortez. Hello there, you two. I've got to say, I enjoyed that last mission on Rado. Ah, pit him against a defenseless jamming tower and Esteban here feels like a big man. Hey, the Kodiak is a transport, not a fighter. It's for dropping jarheads like you into hot zones. And if you stow the attitude, it might even be for picking you up again. <laughs> Ma'am. I like their banter. I like this duo. Hey. A anything else? Hey. Okay, James. James has nothing to say. No. Okay, Naomi. Naomi. You are chill. You are chill. You are not going to slag off the puppy. Hey there. There we go. That's right. Be nice to Sophie. Be nice to Sophie. She is a good pupper. She is a good metal pupper. She does not deserve to be called a bad dog. And I, I feel like feeding my fish. I feel like feeding my fish. Where's... Uh, there's Jeff. Hello, Jeff. My favourite fish. Oh, and there's the eel. You uh, Eel, if you dare eat Jeff. If you dare eat Jeff Eel, I will be very upset. But oh, look at this. This is, this is gorgeous. Look at my gorgeous fish tank. And yeah, this is, this is looking like it's complete. Oh, this is wonderful. That I haven't said hello to the space hamster in a while. Hello, space hamster. Hello, space, are you all right? You're, you're fine. You're all good. Yeah, lovely. Excellent. Now then, back to the kick. Let's head on out. Commander. Yeah, okay, good stuff. Good stuff. I always like to do a double check with uh, with trainer. Um, yeah, no, no, I want to leave. I want to leave and we are gonna head to, oh God, was, was there another system? That had opened up? I, I thought there was. Not you. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Ooh, I feel like I've been there. Mm. Yeah, done that. 
Oh shit, was that? Oh my god, uh, do we have no other new systems? Was it just you? Oh my, I, I, need, I need to double check. I need to double check. Yeah, that was, that was, um, Grunt's mission with the Rachni. I feel like this was Grissom Academy. I'm just going to double check, though. <laughs> no, that wasn't what I wanted. Okay, no, we've got we've got Novaria here. Okay. But yeah, I I remember we've we've been there, done that. The Anos Basin, I want to say, was Sir Kesh? Maybe? The only one I know for certain was the Ninmar Basin. I remember that. Saradil. Sir Kesh, there we go. I got that right, excellent. Yeah, that's the DMZ zone. No, nothing hidden over there. Okay, and oh my goodness, oh my god, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like. Okay, I guess, I guess we're not moving off. I guess we're gonna stay in this system and um, deal with the with the Geth fighters. And then after that, we'll head to the Citadel. And then I guess we can destroy the Reaper base. Okay, flipping heck. Flipping heck. Now, I've only got about four minutes left on my timer. So let's read some codex entries. Hello there. The Reaper, like the Geth plasma shotgun, the Spitfire is not a true energy weapon. Instead, the minigun magnetically flings clusters of superconducting toroids. These donut-shaped projectiles are designed to shatter upon impact, arcing electricity between the fragments and flash converting them to plasma. The gun's punishing automatic blasts impact with the heat of a cutting torch. The weapon's stopping power has garnered the attention of both Alliance and Quarian intelligence, who theorize that the Spitfire may have been designed to destroy other Geth. Enough Spitfires have been found in the field to suggest that the weapon is out of the prototyping stage and that a schism among synthetics may have forced them into production. Mm. And next up we have the Normandy SR-1. The SSV Normandy SR-1 was a prototype starship developed by the Human Systems Alliance with the assistance from the Citadel Council. The ship employed state-of-the-art stealth technology for reconnaissance in dangerous regions. Most ships emit heat that is easy to detect against the absolute zero background of space. The Normandy, however, could temporarily store its waste heat deep within the hull, allowing the ship to travel undetected for hours, or drift passively for days of covert observation. This was not without risk. Eventually, the stored heat had to be released, or it would build to levels that could cook the crew alive. Another key component of the Normandy stealth system was the revolutionary Tantalus Drive, a Mass Effect core twice the size of a standard unit. The Tantalus Drive generated mass concentrations that the Normandy fell into, allowing it to move without the use of heat-emitting thrusters. The Normandy SR-1 was destroyed in 2183, when it was ambushed by a collector ship in the Omega Nebula and space combat. Shells lofted by surface navies crash back to Earth when their acceleration is overwhelmed by gravity and air resistance. In space, a projectile has unlimited range. It will keep moving until it hits something. Practical gunnery range is, de is determined by the velocity of the attacker's ordnance and the maneuverability of the target. Beyond a certain range, a small ship's ability to dodge trumps a larger attacker's projectile speed. 
the longest ranged combat occurs between dreadnoughts, whose projectiles have the highest velocity but are the least manoeuvrable. The shortest ranged combat is between frigates, which have the slowest projectile velocities and highest manoeuvrability. Opposing dreadnoughts open with a main gun artillery duel at extreme ranges of tens of thousands of kilometres. The fleets close, maintaining evasive lateral motion while keeping their bow guns facing the enemy. Fighters are launched and attempt to close to disrupt a torpedo range. Cautious admirals weaken the enemy with ranged fire and fighter strikes before committing to close action. Aggressive commanders advance so cruisers and frigates can engage. At long range, the main guns of cruisers become useful. Friendly interceptors engage enemy fighters until the attackers enter the range of ship-based guardian fire. Dreadnoughts fire from the rear, screened by smaller ships. Commanders must decide whether to commit to a general melee or retreat into FTL. At medium range, ships can use broadside guns. Fleets intermingle and it becomes difficult to retreat in order. Ships with damaged kinetic barriers are vulnerable to wolf pack frigate flotillas that speed through the battle space. Only fighters and frigates enter close knife fight ranges of 10 or fewer kilometers. Fighters lose their disruptor torpedoes, or fighters loose their disruptor torpedoes, bringing down a ship's kinetic barriers and allowing it to be swarmed by frigates. Guardian lasers become viable weapons, swatting down fighters and boiling away warship armor. There goes my timer. Neither dreadnoughts nor cruisers can use their main guns at close range. Laying the bow on a moving target becomes impossible. Superheated thruster exhaust becomes a hazard. Lovely. Okay, and now we just have technology, the Reaper War, the Reapers, and weapons, armor, and equipment left. Okay. Lovely jubbly. In the next episode, I guess we deal with those Geth fighters. I, I hadn't expected that. I thought that at least one other system had opened up, but I guess I was mistaken. So, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.